And here is the Writer's Almanac for Sunday. It's the 19th of July, 2020. It's the anniversary of the first Convention for Women's Rights on this day, 1848, Seneca Falls, New York. Elizabeth Cady Stanton had the idea when she met Lucretia Mott in London for a world anti-slavery convention. That was eight years before, 1840. They got to the convention in London and found that they, as women, would not be seated and they could only attend behind a drapery partition because women were considered unfit for public meetings. Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton were outraged, decided to organize their own convention. It took them time. Stanton was running a household, raising her kids, the first three of which were boys. She lived in Boston. Lucretia Mott was busy in Philadelphia as a Quaker minister. But when Mrs. Stanton and her husband moved from Boston to the town of Seneca Falls in the Finger Lakes region, western New York, she started to think again about the rights of women, and she met Lucretia Mott in July 1848, and there they cooked up the idea of the Convention for Women's Rights, ran an announcement in the Seneca County Courier, the weekly paper, and on the morning of July 19th, a small crowd of men and women gathered, 10 o'clock in the morning. Five of the organizers had gathered three days before to draft a declaration of sentiments, a list of 11 resolutions calling for religious, economical, and political equality. There was some controversy about the ninth of those 11 resolutions, which called for women to be given the vote. Lucretia Mott thought it went too far. But there was a good crowd there, 300 people, 40 of them men, sat in 90-degree heat. The resolutions passed, including the one calling for the right to vote. Reaction in the press was mostly negative. A newspaper in Philadelphia said, a woman is nobody, a wife is everything. Later in her life, Elizabeth Cady Stanton wrote in her diary, we are sowing winter wheat, which the coming spring will see sprout, and which other hands than ours will reap and enjoy. And it would be 72 years before women would get the right to vote. Only one of the women who signed the Declaration of Sentiments was still living in 1920, Charlotte Woodward, and she was too old and too ill to cast her ballot. Here's a poem for today by Naomi Shihab Nye, entitled Wedding Cake. Once on a plane, a woman asked me to hold her baby and disappeared. I figured it was safe, our being on a plane and all, how far could she go? She returned one hour later, having changed her clothes and washed her hair. I didn't recognize her. By this time, the baby and I had examined each other's necks. We had cried a little. I had a silver bracelet and a watch. Gold studs glittered in the baby's ears. She wore a tiny white dress, leafed with layers like a wedding cake. I did not want to give her back. The baby's curls coiled tightly against her scalp. Another alphabet. I read, No, 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 my mother gets tired. I'll chew your hand. The baby left my skirt crumpled, my lap aching. Now I'm her secret guardian, the little nub of dream that rises slightly but won't come clear. As she grows, as she feels ill at ease, I'll bob my knee. What will she forget? Whom will she marry? He'd better check with me. I'll say, once she flew, dressed like a cake, between two doilies of cloud, she could slip the card into a pocket, pull it out. Already she knew the small finger was funnier than the whole arm. A poem by Naomi Shihab Nye, Wedding Cake, from her collection Fuel. That's the Writer's Almanac for Sunday, the 19th of July. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.